welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. We're your hosts, Kira Dent and Dr. Mark Costas. Mark and I had this crazy idea that maybe we could combine a dentist and a team member's perspective because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. And Dental 18 Podcast was created. I'm a practicing dentist, a multiple practice owner, a dental performance coach, and the founder of the Dental Success Institute. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, biller, office manager, current practice owner, and international dental consultant. Mark and I don't just understand you, we are you. Our goal is to positively impact the world of dentistry by sharing our lessons learned from the road in hundreds of dental offices. Two perspectives, one mission, to help dental professionals reach their full potential. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Dentalpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Mark Costas, driving through what looks like the Antarctic right now. It is 16 degrees in Prescott, Arizona, and I am leaving um, our team meeting at my Chino Valley office, my flagship office, and uh, it is a little bit of chaos here because... Uh, We had the polar vortex hit Prescott area, and uh, my house personally got 36 inches of snow. Uh, We have about four cars in our parking lot from um, our team members that showed up for work on Thursday, and they couldn't leave because the snow um, kind of trapped them at the practice, so everybody got shuttled home by people with four-wheel drive trucks. Um, So it is crazy. It is absolutely beautiful, but it looks literally like... Antarctica is all white. Um, also on the phone with us is somebody that is not in the polar vortex, and that is Kira Dent. How are you doing, Kira? I'm great. How are you? That sounds like a wild life you're living over there. <laughs> it's pretty freaking awesome. It's pretty awesome, but I mean, not good for business, right? When four of your practices are down for two days apiece, that's, uh, let's see, carry the one divided by two, <laughs> that's eight days <laughs> down total of uh, misproduction. Uh, but hey, Mother Nature, when she uh, when she wants to uh, show her dominance, that she could do that at any time. And she did here in Prescott. But it is gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Like I can't even explain how, how cool it is because we have all uh, these rolling pastures out here in Chino Valley. And they're all, there's two inches, I'm sorry, two feet of snow on all of these rolling pastures. So it just looks gorgeous. So fun. Yeah. So fun. I think it's, I mean, Reno got pummeled the other day. They really did. They got about seven feet of snow, but Reno's like, they get the like blast from Donner's Pass and then it just melts away though. So yeah. there's about, you know, there's a couple of feet of snow in the hills, but nothing. I mean, and it does, it looks like that beautiful white blanket and you know, but gosh, it's just like, holy cow. But then the East Coasters, I have a couple offices on the East Coast that I coach weekly. Mm-hmm. And they're like, nope, we got nothing over here. You guys are just getting pummeled on the West. <laughs> like, it is weird. Don't worry. <laughs> Super weird. But And I, I got to give a shout out to my neighbor, um, Charles. Not that he listens to podcasts because he's like 80. But um, <laughs> we left. We were smart. 80 year olds listen to podcasts too, Mark. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to alienate any of the 80 year olds that are listening to our, to our voices right now. Um, well, my, my, my dad's 84 and he listens to the podcast every single day. So there you go. Um, <laughs> you, he, <laughs> uh, but he's on a cruise right now, so he won't be listening to okay, this. Okay. Uh, so uh, anyway, Charles, like we, we left town because we had to be in Scottsdale for a soccer tournament uh, this weekend. And we looked at the, the, um, the weather forecast. And as soon as we realized they're canceling school on Thursday, Friday, we just packed up the kids literally at like nine 30 at night and headed down to Scottsdale to avoid all the snow. Cause we didn't want to get oh. stuck up in Prescott, not being able yeah. to get down to the soccer tournament. So we've been down in Scottsdale uh, from Wednesday to Sunday and we missed all of the snow, just, just kind of the, the, the aftermath of all of it. But we mm-hmm. had 36 inches of snow on our driveway and Carrie, you've been up our driveway. It is, oh, it is that's a nightmare. <laughs> it is crazy. Our driveway is crazy. We, my house is in the middle of the woods, 6,400 feet. Um, beautiful, but really, really treacherous in the wintertime. Yeah. Our regular a- plow driver, our regular pl- plow driver blo- broke his blade on our driveway. So he just gave uh-huh. up. Uh, She's like, forget it. Good luck. Put on the four wheel driver. Get out of here. That's right. So our one neighbor, Charles, even though we were out of town, he's he called me and he's like, Hey Mark, uh, if you guys want to come home anytime in the next week or so and get to your house 
somebody's gonna have to dig you out because Ethan, our plow driver, um, wasn't able to do oh, it. Gosh. So he has a tractor. So he took his tractor and worked on it all day on Sunday to clear a path for oh. us to get our cars up to our house. Just the coolest guy ever. So I got to give a shout out to Charles for digging us out. And then we got home at nine o'clock last night and my, it was 20 degrees. And my son Bryce and I had to dig a trench from our uh, detached garage to our house just to be able to get in our house. It was crazy. <laughs> Gosh, well, free workout for you. You're welcome. That's yeah, what Mother Nature said. Mark, you need to work out a little more, so there you I go. Know. I, I'm glad my core <laughs> is in good shape, man, because I, me, me and Bryce were like, and, and it's weird, even though it was 20 degrees, it's crazy. Even though it was 20 degrees, he and I were like sweating. I ended up like oh, in a yeah. hoodie and uh, like sweating uh, profusely from my from my snow throwing workout. Anyway, sorry. I just, uh, I digress, Kira. That's okay. That's okay. Mark, Mark, you just want to share this moment and I was going to let you have it. So I'm glad <laughs> like, and I, I feel like I know what Prescott looks like. And honestly, it, it, it's one of those anomalies where like when you're living through it, when you talk about it, it's like, okay, cool. But when you live through it, you're like, Oh my gosh, like yeah. there is snow everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Especially when it's not a common common thing to deal with so yeah we get snow but not like this man not like this it was it, it's pretty <laughs> awesome though it'll it'll all That's be gone fine. in a week and it'll just be a, a, a distant memory it'll be great for the vegetation that we got this much much precipitation right? but uh well it is it's weird to have these little anomalies because i was in vegas airport on friday and luckily i went in on friday because on thursday vegas got hit with snow which that's an anomaly as well it shut down the airport so in vegas like, all the flights in Vegas, they had <laughs> snow and they don't have de-icing, so all the planes couldn't leave. So they had to like house oh. people. People were in there for over a day because, I mean, a good place, I guess, for most people to get stuck is an extra day in Vegas. But or not, but yeah, they or not. I tell you on what, man. From me. <laughs> when I, when I reach my Vegas limit, I want to be out like that moment. <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> I don't it's want like, any more hangovers. I don't want hangovers. I don't want to smell any more secondhand smoke. I don't need another <laughs> buffet dinner. I just need I need to get the heck out of Dodge. When I'm when I reach my Vegas limit, when I tap out, I wanna like vaporize myself and get back to yeah. back to Prescott. So yeah, yeah, they shut it down. They shut it down for an entire day. And so the next day because I was like, gosh, like the Reno flights, Sacramento flights, you know, those are not super popular flights. And sure enough, they were all booked like solid. No one ever sits by me on those flights, and lo and behold, they were booked solid with massive standby lists just solely due to the no de-icing. But no. anyway, for the rest of the world who doesn't travel like you and I do, this is probably not exciting for us. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, not at all. This is like barbershop talk. It's like, hey, how about the weather? <laughs> <laughs> how about that weather? Let's talk dentistry. <laughs> uh, so tell me about your week last week. You, uh, you and I, gosh, it has been crazy because we were just in Indianapolis like a week ago. And so mm -hmm. much has happened since then. You've been on the road like crazy or you were down south. And uh, tell yeah. me about, tell me really quick, because I don't want to bore the people to death. We've, we're seven <laughs> minutes into this and we've talked about nothing of substance. But um, tell me, tell me about, uh, tell me about your week after our awesome uh, one day event in Indianapolis, Fishers, Indiana, actually, but uh, just outside yeah. of Indianapolis at the brand new DSN facility, which is absolutely gorgeous. Bender um, did a fantastic job. job. Dr. Dave Bender, amazing. 28 operatory practice, 16,000 square feet with a teaching facility on top, which is the Dental Success Network's new Indianapolis campus. And uh, yeah, just a gorgeous, I mean, state of the art, beautiful, huge. Um, just imagine 28 chairs, guys. It's gorgeous. Beautiful. I feel like they need to have tra air traffic control down there to like make sure people aren't like running into each other. It was so big. There were so many things. It was awesome. It was so, awesome. Yeah. And they have these, <laughs> they have these pods, which is really cool. They have these pods where each general dentist runs their own kind of like practice, uh, six mm -hmm. operatory practice pod. So they're responsible kind of, uh, for, um, the production in that particular pod. Uh, one general dentist will take that pod and have however many, uh, uh, front office and back office uh, facilitators slash, mm -hmm. you know, support staff for that particular pod. So it's really interesting how they do it. It's like several different um, general dental offices down there in per pod. And then they have a whole suite for the pediatric dentist and the specialists. They have a, they have a oral surgery um, section as well. So mm -hmm. uh, very cool, very cool, very forward thinking, very innovative. And, uh, 
just the number of patients that they pump through that place on a on a daily basis is just absolutely insane. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it was fun. It was fun to see an innovative way in how they did it and how they set it up because 28 ops feels sometimes daunting. So to see that was really inspiring and just fun to see how different people do different things. But yeah, the event was a ton of fun. Mark, we had a blast. I loved it. Loved every second of it. And then, yep, back to the road I went. But this week it was fun. I was in Alabama. I went to two different offices and I actually brought um, a hygienist with me because we are working on our hygiene portion of consulting right now. So it was a, I felt like it stretched my brain on so many different levels to see (laughs) the world from hygiene and also trying to train and develop a whole new curriculum for consulting. Um, But it was, it was awesome. And it was fun to tag team. And um, I feel like both offices, I'm excited to see, you know, I feel like we're Johnny Appleseed and we sprinkle little seeds to see how they sprout and how they'll take off and ways to manipulate. And Mark, you and I have been talking about it. So that's another project Mark and I have been doing that now. I just like blurted right out there, but we, yeah, I'm really office, excited to see. Dental success hygiene, <laughs> dental success hygiene it's called. And we have a, a written slash online curriculum uh, to get mm-hmm. hygienists to the very next level um, and beyond. And we also have in-office coaching, which is something that um, our bank of awesome mastermind members have been begging for for years now we've finally totally. made it a reality we have uh we have a stable of great hygienists that are going to be traveling on our behalf mm-hmm. to train uh hygienists in offices so uh stay tuned guys there's going to be a lot more details forthcoming but um it is something that we've been working on for years now you really really hard uh working really hard on this Kira so congratulations yeah. and you got you had your beta test this week and it went really well. So congrats. Good. Thank you. I'm super excited. So that's been the fun, the fun. I think you and I decided 2019 was our year of creative development and mm-hmm. we just decided to hit the ground running and like we haven't stopped. So it's been, um, I remember telling you on Friday, I feel like I'm, I'm evolving into a new version of myself that can take on all these different responsibilities. And I think that that's something that as we all evolve and grow and Mark, tell me if this resonates with you, but like I watched myself and who I was a year ago did not have the capacity to take on the leadership and the roles and the growth model that we're heading into. And so I feel like I'm almost like a snake that's like sloughing off my old self and emerging into this newer version of myself. For sure. And it's, it's something where you can't, like I've found I can't keep running and being the muscle power behind it. I have to start looking at it of strategically placing myself in different areas to to be able to do more that's not solely dependent on me. And it's like this whole different shift of my brain that I think dentists and people alike grow into this and we evolve into it as we progress. You know, you start out as like, like Mark, when you go back to doing clinical dentistry, I'm always like, don't revert back. Like don't go back in time. <laughs> I enjoy it. You're a different version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it is a different version, you know, and, and not to, not to derail your, your thought here. Cause I love the way the direction, the direction you're going here. But like when I go back to clinical dentistry now, it's like, Oh, this is like clinical work on my terms. It's like, I'm seeing only right. the patients that I like to see doing only the procedures that I like to do. Um, working with only the assistants that I like to work with. So it is an evolution. But, you know, to your point, Kira, um, it's funny. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, just an absolute junkie to personal development, right? So ever since mm-hmm. I was 16 years old, I've been reading personal development books, Tony Robbins and uh, Napoleon Hill and, you know, all of the, all of the late great uh, personal development guys. Um, and when I go back to read those books now, I read mm-hmm. them. It's like reading them all over again because I am four versions of what I used to be. You know, it's right. like 16 year old Mark doesn't exist anymore, obviously. But like I was seeing life in such a different perspective back then than I am now. Um, we all evolve. We all have to evolve. And I think that the reason that so many people feel um, unfulfilled in their careers, be it dentistry or anything else, is that they get stuck in this holding pattern and they feel like they're doing the same thing over and over again and they, they lose sense of what their purpose is and they lose that, that feeling of, um, that, that incredible feeling of evolution and, and uh, growth. And mm-hmm. I think that constant growth uh, is what leads to fulfillment. And that's what you're experiencing right now, Kira. I mean, what you, uh, what you just alluded to the fact that Kira of a year ago wouldn't be able to handle what you are handling now with ease 
um, is a part of that evolution. And when you, right. uh, in 12 months from now, when you look back, who knows what that, what that evolution is going to look like, but you're going to be a totally different person in, in 12 months than you are right now. Absolutely. Um, it's and I cool. think that that's, it's super cool because I remember I actually wrote this on my mirror. I'm one of those weirdos who like takes a dry erase marker and writes things on my mirror. So when I'm getting ready, you know, the two times I'm actually at home every year, um, and Jason has to look at that the whole time when you're not there. <laughs> yeah, so apparently I create things for him as opposed to creating them for myself. <laughs> Here, Jason, here's your motivational speeches on my mirrors. Um, super, super great, guys. If you ever want your spouse to do anything that like they're not doing, just like put it up there for yourself and make them read it every day. But um, but I wrote on there one day, progress equals happiness, and I pulled it from a Tony Robbins um, the YouTube that I was listening to in the shower that morning and. Um, I was like, you know, that is so true when we're progressing, that's where the happiness is. And I think when you can, like, I've thought about this a lot, like when you're growing and you're progressing, you have happiness, you're creating, you're evolving into this newer version of yourself. And I think that that's where teams are too. So when you look at your team or you look at your, your, as a dentist, if you're not progressing and your team's not happy, like look to see where you can progress, look to see where you can evolve into a new version. Maybe you've been doing all the same procedures for gosh forever and you're super happy because you keep refining that, I don't know, ML ideal prep and you're super solid with that and you love to just make it better and better and better. And that by all means keep going. Mm -hmm. But if you plateaued and you're stagnant and your team is stagnant, people like to progress. Mm -hmm. They like to grow. They like to evolve. And so as I watch teams and when I consult and I coach, I watch to see and I'm constantly pushing. People sometimes don't like me when I come into the office because I will push you. Like the office I just went into, we're moving them into new people. We're moving it into a whole different direction. And I get the grumbling when I'm first there. But every single time they're like, Kira, look at how much we've grown. And people get excited because it is that growth pattern. And that's what I wanted to dive into today of like how to grow and motivate your team beyond just simple things along with like a little sprinkle idea that I've come up with that works amazingly well for appreciation because I think growth and progress creates happiness sprinkled in with appreciation is how you can have a very happy, successful and motivated team. Yeah. I love that topic. I love that the, the whole growth um, topic is something that I've embraced for, for my life and it's never comfortable. I mean, think about, Think about working out in the gym. The only time you are progressing, the only time you are growing in the gym, the only time you'll see gains in strength and stamina in flexibility or anything else is through discomfort. And mm -hmm. discomfort means stepping outside of your comfort zone. And mm -hmm. we spend, you know, the vast majority of our lives trying to be more comfortable. Uh, but all the magic happens outside of that comfort zone. Um, totally. And I mean, that's just an easy analogy is that, that fitness kind of analogy, which I use a lot, but it's so true. Mm -hmm. Right. And personal development and uh, business development and developing a, a, like a sharper business acumen. That's something that I feel like I'm only midway in my path right now. Every time I get around somebody that's smarter or more accomplished or has a bigger organization or a more profitable organization, I am in awe. And I feel like I have so much more to do so much more to progress uh, so much further to progress you know um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh sometimes it takes coaches and people to kind of push you outside of that co comfort zone that's why you know uh people that don't take the time to sharpen the saw as stephen covey would say people that don't take the time to step outside of their normal comfortable environment and go to ce events and meet new people and get outside of of what they what they do every single day. Those are the people that get stagnant. And those are the people that, um, look up after, you know, 15, 20 years and go, man, what has happened? What, what have I done with my life over the last 15 years? And I've had those periods right. of one or two years where I'm like, I am the same person that I was, you know, three years ago. And that, that'll, mm -hmm. that'll jar something in, in to me personally. That's like, Oh my gosh, I have to do something radical right now to, to move in, a, in another direction in a more positive mm -hmm. direction, you know? But I think it's important to take note regularly. Like this year I've been super intentional on every quarter. Like I have never set quarterly goals. I've never set quarterly benchmarks or, and I, I kind of changed it from goals to outcomes. Like what type of a life do I want to live? What type of a, 
like really what outcomes am I looking for as opposed to what goals, because goals are either like a, yay, I rocked it. I won or I failed and I'm a loser now. Mm -hmm. And so, but I also like that they give direction and focus, but really like Mark, you and I were brainstorming the other day of, okay, by the end, at the end of 2019, before we flip the page into 2020, where do we want to be? And how are we going to get there? And let's break it down because then you're actually moving forward and seeing it are the goals that I'm setting are the, is the direction of my practice or my life or my company or my team, are they headed where we want to go? And also having that directed focus of teams. I've worked heavily this year with a lot of offices of like, let's build these wigs, if you will, the four disciplines of execution. Let's truly set those in place. Let's break it down into smaller chunks for quarter one, two, three, and four to make sure we're actually getting there. Mm -hmm. And then let's assess, are these wigs, I mean, you can make a million dollars this year, but is that going to give you the outcome or the life that you actually want? Because I know I have been wildly guilty of thinking once I hit X amount in my businesses or once I have so many businesses or once I help so many clients, I'll feel a certain way. But ultimately, all these goals are just trying to get us into feelings that we want to feel. And that's what we're going for. You can hit a million and you can just feel totally unsatisfied. You can hit all these different benchmarks and feel unsatisfied. And so looking more of what outcome, what desire do I want to have? And then breaking that down and assessing constantly and is what I'm doing, getting me closer or further away from that outcome that I'm looking for. And that's been a mind shift that I've been helping offices to see to really be moving them forward in a growth model, but for a bigger reason than just monetary value, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. So have you ever been one to kind of write down and reverse engineer your goals or is this a kind mm -hmm. of something new? No, I have. I've always done like, I want to hit X amount in the business. So reverse engineer, but I've never been super great at like quarterly checking in with myself. And so what I did this year that was different is every single month I assess where I want to go and I put into place like smaller goals for the month that I'm checking every single week and every single day. Like I bought this super cool planner. Like I feel like a total nerd right now talking about it because it's literally just a piece of paper and it's a planner, mm -hmm. but it forces me to like set my goals every single week reassess and make sure for the quarter I'm moving where I want to go. And at the end of every month, I have to go back and reassess how I did that month. And what I'm doing in that month, is it taking me closer or further away? And it was crazy just in the month of January, mm -hmm. I was being really busy doing things that weren't taking me to where I want to go by the end of the year. Yeah. And so I had to reassess, slough off, change, and then reset for February. And then when I was like looking at my February month, I'm like, there's no way I can even add in any more things. But as I mapped it out and I was strategic, I could find different spaces to fit in without making my life feel chaotic. So it's been this very strategic planning that is actually creating growth and progress. And when people ask you, Mark, like when people ask us, like, how do you and Mark do a podcast and create a new business? And then you do it. Now you're doing hygiene in addition to it. And you're taking on all these extra clients. I personally believe it's a matter of being proactive as opposed to reactive and really making sure everything we're doing is intentional and taking us towards the goal we want to be as opposed to just hoping and praying that that wig that we threw out there will actually achieve. Yeah, for sure. So, okay. It, funny thing is you and I are constantly brainstorming and we, the problem is that we're both idea people, but we're also implementers, but we, we hold each other in check, right? It's like, okay, great idea. Let's stick a pin in that because we have 16 other things that we have to do before, before we start totally. <laughs> this, this new, you know, this new business or, or this new, um, version of a, an existing business. So mm -hmm. it, it feels to me like you're in a place since I've known you, um, over the last couple of years, uh, where you're really, really driving this particular year and you're really, really excited about new things that are happening to the fact, to the point where you're a little bit like me, where you're, not sleeping in ever because you're as soon as you wake up, your mind just starts, um, just starts churning and it's, it's difficult mm -hmm. to go back to bed because you're really excited about what's, what's happening in your life. I don't, I don't want to speak for you, but that's the way it seems from the outside. No, absolutely. In. Absolutely. Um, Great. So what led to that first of all, and, and what actually are you seeking? I know this is kind of deep right now and I, I want to get into mm -hmm. Uh, People get to know Carrie Dunn today. We're getting, yeah. we're getting all feely today. Uh -oh. Yeah, because, <laughs> because, because, you know, I, I have had that moment that you're just kind of talking about where I, I achieved all of my financial goals. And I thought that on the other side of that, I was 
going to like the the clouds were going to part and the sea was going to part and I was going to like be miraculously happy as soon as it happened, but it happened and it, and it was like really disappointing. In fact, mm-hmm. um, that, that was a, a point in my life where I was extremely unhappy and that, that was, uh, it just happened to coincide with the point when I hit all of my financial goals. So what is it exactly that you're seeking? Is it, is it some sort of size of a business? Is it some sort of a monetary return? Is it uh, traveling less? Um, what exactly is it that you're, you're shooting for? Yeah. Well, I think it's, um, I think it's been an evolution process. I think when I first started business, it was, um, I was doing business. I I was at a solid state of depression and I needed something to like prove to myself that I wasn't this worthless piece of crap that I thought I was like, that was literally what was driving me at the very beginning when I started my consulting business Mm -hmm. before I met you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then after that, it was like proving to myself and like, how many people can we help? And it was all about numbers and which was great. I think that was kind of a good way to start a business. But in addition to that, I felt like I was, I was um, falling apart in the fact that I was losing myself. I was, um, I was like, I'm hitting all these financial goals and I'm, because that was all my goals were focused on. And so now um, I've been doing a lot of like reassessing because I'm hitting these goals, but I'm still not feeling that fulfilled feeling like I wanted. So instead I was like, well, Kira, you're trying to say like, you want to make X amount of money because you think you'll feel successful. You think you'll feel content. You think you'll feel like financially successful. Like I'm actually going for feelings and thinking all these goals will hit that. Mm -hmm. So instead I've reversed it and I'm like, what do I actually want to feel? And so on my phone right now, it says decide the type of life you actually want to live and then say no to everything else. And that is hard for me because I like to say yes and I like to do things. But Mark, in a lot of the business things that we in our masterminds, it talks about how like the most successful people, excuse me, tend to say no to more things than they say yes to. And that's like a very big part of this evolution. So this year, my goal was I want to feel balanced. I don't want to be running around crazy. But being balanced doesn't mean I have to be any less financially successful. I believe I could actually be more financially successful by being balanced. So the outcome I'm looking for is to feel that eerie calm of like, things are moving really, really well. And I'm not running around like a chicken with my head cut off, Mm -hmm. but I'm hitting more goals than I ever thought I would. So that's, that's the lifestyle. That's the feeling like, I don't want to be traveling all the time, but I want to still help more people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be gone all the time. I want to be able to go hit the slopes because it's beautiful snow and I want to go snowboarding. Mm -hmm. And that's okay but still having very successful. I want to still grow. Like Mark, when you and I chat all the time of all of our genius ideas, instead of being like, yeah, let's get on the bandwagon today and start doing it. I look to see quarter one, two, three, or four, where will that fit in, in the strategic placement? So we actually can achieve all these goals and still feel balanced in between all of it. Yeah. So that's been the reverse engineering of what outcome, what life do I actually want to live? Like what feeling do I want to feel at the end of this year? And then backtracking that, to and hopefully this is making sense but then putting things in all these additional ideas that you and i have because really we have so many good ideas that i want to do but doing them at the right time in the proper order to make sure that things actually have progress this year as opposed to just being ideas put up on a board yeah yeah i mean there's there's thank you for being being so vulnerable about that 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 was a really valuable insights uh there there is you know a a, there's a season for content consumption. There's a season for content creation. There's a season for execution. And there's a whole lot of content that's been created um, for you and I over the last couple of years. Now it's the time to execute and to release it out to the world, to to organize it, to release it out to the world. And, and uh, that's the season that we happen to be in, you know, Um, this time next year, who knows what season we'll be in. But um, I, I, there's a lot of really valuable insights there and I appreciate that. Um, yeah. so tell me about, tell me about, um, your thoughts on growth and because there's, there's probably, um, I, in fact, I know for sure that because I've been there myself, um, and I am my own avatar. I mean, the, the, I started this podcast speaking to myself, right? I, I pictured, um, a lot of other people that also were burnt out clinically, I pictured a lot of people that got into dentistry um, and were interested in business, but were totally unequipped for 
uh, with the tools to run a successful business. So I started a podcast wanting to interview people that could help me clarify exactly how to be a biz- better business owner, how to how to set mm-hmm. goals and achieve mm-hmm. them, and and uh, how to be mm-hmm. less burnt out clinically, spend less time at the dental chair, um, and still you know have the financial rewards of being a really great clinical dentist. So I was speaking to yeah. myself uh, when I started this podcast. Um, but I know that there's a lot of people that probably were in your shoes that were super burnt out and that, that maybe are depressed and unfulfilled in their career. And growth is one way to push yourself out of it. But you have to be kind of clear about what the outcome is if you actually do um, accomplish those goals. So, so tell us mm-hmm. about you know your thoughts on growth. That's what you wanted to talk about today. And, and that's what you've been working with with a lot of your, with a lot of your high-end clients that you've been visiting lately. Mm-hmm. I think it's, <clears throat> I think it's that piece of growth, like, but you have to know where you want to go. And I remember like the Alice in Wonderland, it says, it doesn't matter what path you take. It only depends on where you want to go. Mm-hmm. And I think about that a lot because, you know, so often I hear clients and like, well, I want to do a million this year. That's one of my wigs. Mm-hmm. And I ask How them, often I say, do we hear that? I mean, everybody well, that's under a million uses a million as this <laughs> magical threshold of once I hit totally. that, things are going to be great. And it's funny because yeah. we've had people that have started at 700,000 and, and blasted through a million. Now they're at like 2.1 and they're like, all I want is to get to three. It's like, dude, do you right. remember when you just needed to get to one <laughs> and everything was going to be fine and you were going to be happy? And now you're depressed because you're at 2.1 and you have this huge right. mountain to climb to get to three. We see it all the time. It's crazy. All the time. And so I ask people, like, why? Why do you want to hit a million? Like, why is that a goal? And typically it's like, well, because so-and-so does it, so why not me? And I'm like, but what are you actually going for? Because growth is only sustainable and like you only get it if you really want it. Sure. I can really want to hit a million, but why? Like, Oh, it's going to create financial security for me. It's going to, and like breaking down your why, like, what is it for me? I want to hit X amount because I want financial security. Jason and I like divorce was on the line and I was terrified out of my mind. I don't have a job. I don't have any financial means that are for me. And if I ever hit like rock bottom, like, how will I take care of myself? I had to move in with my parents at one point in my life. Like, that's why I have certain financial goals, because I know my threshold of where I feel financially safe. That's a huge why for me. And you can probably hear it in my passion of like, you better believe I will hit those numbers because I've got this burning, chomping desire within me that I feel safe when I'm at X amount. So like, why are you going for it? Do you want financial security? Do you feel like if you're there, you'll have ease? Well, Ease isn't from a dollar amount in your bank account. Ease comes from having systems in place with people working. So you don't always have to be the one muscling through and having the power to do so. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, do you want to spend more time with your family? Do you want to travel? Traveling is my big thing. I want to go to all seven continents and I have it out there to get to Antarctica this year. And I'm already researching how I'm going to do it. Like, Just come to Prescott right now. It looks exactly the same. (laughs) Can we just check it off my list? Thank you. Everyone's like, why Antarctica? Do you know what's even there? I'm like, yes, it's freezing cold and I hate the cold, but it's a goal that I just want to do. Okay. Like it makes me real happy. But like, why are you doing it? Because then growth feels achievable and it feels attainable because you're actually excited about it. You're not just putting a number up on the board. Like Mark, last year, I remember I said, I want dental masters, which is now the dental A team. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We've switched names. Um, But like, I wanted them to hit certain numbers. And when I looked at them, they had no meaning to me. They were just numbers on a board, but it didn't resonate with me because I didn't know why I wanted it there other than to say that I hit that goal. It meant nothing to me. And so growth has to matter to you. And then you've got to get your team on board, in my opinion, because that's the easiest way to do it. So like this year, I've asked my team, like, well, where do you want to go? I know Tiffany is 100% obsessed with lifestyle. So for me to try and push her into bigger goals, she likes them as long as it fits with her lifestyle. If not, forget it. That's not what she wants. That's not where she's going. Mm -hmm. Then I have another gal that's joined our team named Donna. Donna's obsessed with growth and she wants to like go after this with hardcore like gumption. She's fantastic. She's got so many growth ideas and marketing and billing and like, so sky's the limit with that. So that team member, I can motivate and have them help me because she's more growth. Tiff's more lifestyle. So she keeps me very balanced with lifestyle. And then Kaylee, Kaylee just wants to have things organized and very smooth flowing. Well, awesome. Give Kaylee just moved our entire company into a new realm, but all three of those people in their individual ways that they want to grow, 
they're helping all the companies grow because I know where I want to be at the end of 2019 Mm -hmm. and I maximize each person's skill sets and their desires and what they want to help us all get to where we want to go in 2019. Mark, I also utilize you as a team member. I know you want massive growth and both you and I are building to like reach the masses of people who can't come in in full consulting. So I know I'm utilizing you because that's, that's helping me not want to travel as much that's a player that I use based on that growth, based on things you want to do. And I'm able to use each person. And that's where I wanted to tie in teams. If you as the leader know where you want to end up, you have all these players working with you, figure out which player's strengths will help benefit you in the best way to get to that growth because they'll feel fulfilled. They're progressing in the direction they want to go. Not everyone will progress in the same way, but everyone will bring different pieces to the table. So Yes. Is that a little bit harder because you can't just across the masses say, we want to get here. Everybody gets more reviews. We all want to get here. Everybody does this. And you have to fine tune a little bit more based on strengths. Absolutely. But you have happier team members because they're fulfilled with what they truly want to have. And you're hitting the goals that you want to have in a much easier, efficient way because you're playing each player to their highest potential helping them feel fulfilled in the process. So hopefully like Mark, as I said all that, hopefully it came out and how it is in my mind of super clear, concise, explainable that somebody else could go implement this. But that's how I see growth and how to maximize your team to get you where you want to be at the end. So let's talk about reverse engineering that growth then, because that's kind of what you do when you coach, right? I mean, yep. uh, what we do at, at Dental Success Institute is reverse engineer growth. Okay. So you set, you set your intention, you set your, your wigs, your one, two or three main things that you want to focus on for a year. Um, and we just kind of throw mm-hmm. that out as like, okay, just set them. But really it's really important. Just like you kind of talked about earlier to make sure that your intention is backed up by like solid reasoning. And it's not just an arbitrary goal because, um, you see somebody else, uh, has accomplished it and, you want to be challenged. Like there has to be a really solid reason why that you're setting those one, two or three uh, big goals for the year. And let's talk about reverse engineering. Well, sorry, I want to tie on that a little more because if you don't have a reason why it'll be just like in January where you say, I want to get a six pack and you go to the gym for two weeks and you really don't want it because it's too hard and you're not committed to it. And like, you don't actually really want that. You stop going to the gym, you stop working out, you stop eating healthy because you didn't actually want it. It was just an arbitrary goal out there. So figure out what, like, so I heard on Tony Robbins the other day, and this connected with me. So if it connects with anyone else there, great, because I couldn't figure out goals. Like I was like, I'm such a good goal setter, but it's more what outcome do you want? What is the outcome you're looking for? Mm -hmm. And then set that as the goal. Like that's what you're going for that you're totally connected to. Mm -hmm. You will see that you'll hit those way faster than some arbitrary thing that just is a nice number on a whiteboard. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, okay. Um, I only got you for five more minutes. So you're good. Let's talk about, let's talk about really quick the steps to reverse engineering these big goals, right? So Mm -hmm. we, we talk about, you know, making some smaller, uh, lead measures and lag measure. We, we talk mm-hmm. about lead measures, lag measures, the, the cadence of, of, of accountability. This is directly from the four disciplines of execution. I'm not rewriting this stuff. Um, but how do we go about moving in the direction that we want to over a 12 month period of time and breaking that down into smaller, more achievable, um, bite size mm-hmm. kind of goals? So, The way I do it, and Mark, I love your insight as well, because I know I can learn a lot from you. Um, But the way I do it is I break it down. So I say, okay, I want to have, like, for example, use the podcast. We want to have 10,000 listeners by the end of the year. Okay, Mm -hmm. well, then break it down. What steps do I need to do to get there? Mm -hmm. Well, I need to get reviews. I need to put great content out there. Well, I need to post two times. I need to have a marketing team in place. I need to get great speakers on there. Yeah. Okay, those are like my my five big to do's. Well, then I break that down even further. Okay, what's going to happen in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four? Love it. All this is just set in pencil. It's not in pen, so you can change it. Like so, okay, my first step's going to be a get the podcast launched. Thank you, iTunes. Like, let's hope that this happens soon. Like, get that launched and set dates of when you want these things to happen. Mark, you and I can attest. Things don't always happen as you think they're going to. And you sit and you wait for a long time. 
Well, then you just pivot and you readjust because just and then because refocus things on take something a look, else. Yeah. Yep, yeah. exactly. And so that's where I say like set the five steps that you need to do or 10 steps or whatever, how many steps you need to do, then take those 10 steps and divide them into quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And then I say like whatever method you want to do, for me, it's helped a lot this year to be super focused and intentional. I review them every single week. Am I on track to hit this goal? How do I need to pivot and where am I at? And then I also have it broader with the month where it's broken down for the month so I can see kind of a bigger picture and then where I want to be at the end of quarter one. So then if I'm lagging or I'm leading, I can either move myself forward or take myself back. But at the end of the day, my goal is not moving before the end of 2019, December 31st, 2019. With the caveat that if once you're on this path and you're headed towards this and you're going, if it drives you and makes you so excited and you're loving every minute of it, keep going forward. But if you get into it and you're like, I absolutely hate this and it's not taking me where I want to go, pivot and redirect so that way you're totally committed to these goals. But that's how I break them down. But Mark, I'd love to hear how you break them down as well. Yeah. I mean, it's easier to take like an example, right? Uh, or or a mini case study or something like that. So if, if you're talking about a goal like production, for instance, uh, many of our clients have a goal to increase production between 20 and 30% over the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen people crush that and go, you know, 50% growth in a 12 month period of time. We see it all the time. But I mean, if, if we're going to try to reverse engineer this, then we're looking at, at each department and how each department could potentially contribute to that overall growth goal. Okay. So, and we can, we can take that by month, by quarter, by day, by hour. And, and we do. We do. We, we mm -hmm. look at the, mm -hmm. the doctor and the associate. We say, okay, we want to increase your production by 20%. And that looks like this per day. That looks like this per hour. And that comes down to a lot of different things. A lot of people have mm -hmm. to contribute to the doctor's production increasing, right? And the hygiene department production increasing. That means that there has to be a certain number of uh, new patient calls that flow through the front office that are actually closed. Like not just, not just people like, uh, shopping and finding out how much a crown costs, but those, those calls when people are calling in actually get converted into butts and seats and new patients. So we have to track some sort of performance metric for the front office. And then the back office has to have maybe maybe they would be responsible for a certain amount of same day treatment that they're going to close per day. We just did this in our in our um, in our weekly meeting. Okay, everybody is responsible for you know we have six uh, chair side assistants. Every person for the remainder of the month is responsible for seven hundred fifty dollars in same day treatment uh, for the doctor that they happen to be working with. Okay, that's that's one way to for. Uh, the back office to, to contribute to this overall goal. And then we have hygiene. You know, hygiene has a number of different adjunct services that we can lean on. Um, same day um, or topical fluoride. Um, our hygienists right now are trying to get to 80% of acceptance rate for their topical fluoride. And uh, next quarter, we're going to be working on adult sealants, you know, uh, sealants that uh, would benefit adults over, you know, adolescent years because the PPO insurance will always cover for the sealant. So we're always doing those, but how about adults? There's a huge opportunity for adults to get sealants as well. So there per department, we could break that down per quarter, per, per, uh, month, per week, per day, per hour. And that's the way that we handle, that's the way that we handle our growth goals. We make it really tangible every single day. Everybody, when you walk in, and you ask anybody on our team, hey, what are you working on this week? They can tell you what their lead measure is for that particular week. And yes, it's that and amount of that point. It's the, it's that amount of intentionality, right? And everybody's mm -hmm. being on the same page. And they their peers know what their what what the, the other department's goals are as well. Um, that's a big absolutely. Part. And I tell offices all the time, like check yourself to see if your team actually knows where you're going because it's so much easier to hit a goal if your team's behind it and they know. So I love to walk into offices and I'm like, Hey, what are your three goals for this year? And I love to do it in front of the doctors because 90% of those offices don't know their goals. Yeah. And so it's like, we're pushing and we're pushing and we're pushing, but our team doesn't even know why we're doing this. Right. And so making it so good, like I say you put your three goals on the whiteboard where they look at them every single day. So they know why everything's going towards that because then they've got this focus and this vision 
that they're a part of as well. Every single person on your team should be able to say what your goals are and how they're individually contributing to that every single week. Like you said, it becomes a much easier way to grow a practice when the whole team's focus on the same goals and utilizing their strengths to get there. Progress equals happiness. And I believe that that's how you have happy teams. Woo. Good one, Kara. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time today. I mean, as usual, you and I just, when we riff, that's when all the, that's when all the good stuff comes out. So, uh, so thanks for, thanks for being on the air today. Um, you guys are going to hear a lot of really cool stuff coming down the pike out of me and Kira and, uh, uh, just stay tuned because uh, and hang on for dear life because there's going to be there's going to be a lot of really <laughs> just really pray fun for things. us. We have yeah. so many fun ideas. It's so exciting. And, I just uh, did jazz when you and I talk. I think people can feel that energy too. Like we have so many fun things coming. So I'm excited for sure. And there's ways for you guys to to um, to participate in all of our all of our new projects um, for free. Really, I mean, you guys don't have to pay totally. a thing. Just show up. Just show up and and come willing to uh, with an open mind, willing to learn, and we'll be there. We'll for what it's worth, we'll be there. <laughs> right, Kara? Exactly. All right, Mark. Well, you be safe driving, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Kira Dent. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Aid Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.